Hey everybody, uh, today we've got on, um, we got three of the strongest juniors out there, all coming off their performances at the Arnold Pro Finals. And we're just going to talk about how the Arnold went, each of the individual performances, and then just what everyone has going forward, and we'll see how it goes. So let's just start and just jump straight into the day. So, okay, so we'll start with obviously the first thing that uh, was a little bit unknown. Joe, yeah, um, saying he's going 80, 82, he's going to probably weigh in 99, uh, 79, 80, whatever, and then, of course, makes the, the cut to 75. So first off, uh, were you always, was that always the plan? Actually, no. Um, I, had a, I had a talk with Lucky's coach, actually, Marcellus, and we're talking gut cut strategies, weight cut strategies, and the original plan, like, back like right after nationals was to go 75 but then around two months into the bulk i was already 82.4 and i was like all right um might as well just thug it out at 82 maybe do a gut cut weigh in 79 um but training wasn't as i guess high around i'd say three blocks out so during the first two blocks i gained a lot of momentum especially on the squat um but then it started slowing down and i ended up losing like two kilos um, what the kind of intentionally not like I was, I wasn't trying to like restrict myself, but, um, I was, I was, you know, not trying to force feed anymore. And, um, I noticed that especially for bench, um, that stayed somewhat strong squat took like a five kilo dip. Um, and Delif wasn't even, it wasn't even affected at all. So I was like, all right, I'm around, you know, 79 now. Um, I probably can maintain this and then cut to like 77, 76. Um, but then I was doing the gut cut. Um, I was, I went down to, I believe like 76 and a half just off that. And I was like, all right, I'm already this close. Might as, might as well just spit and water cut the rest. So that's what I did. And, um, I narrowly made weight. I was, I was spinning for three hours cause, um, I got, my scale was pretty accurate. So I was pretty confident in, uh, measuring that up to the, the weight check scale. But, um, I really wanted to make weight at that point, especially for the Delif record. And just so I can like look at open powerlifting and it'll see like 75 and then, you know, my name will pop up there. But uh, yeah, that was the reason I, I didn't intentionally make the cut uh, to begin, but then I just noticed strength was still high. So I was like, all right, screw it. I'm just going to continue it out and just, just do the, the water and the gut manipulation. Okay. I mean, we'll get deeper into that later, but I, just, yeah. I was just curious whether this was a plan the whole time, because I kind of, if this was a plan the whole time, I honestly am not sure what the point of like the whole like surprise aspect of the cuts are because the bottom line is it's not like anyone else can like the whole like obviously everyone talked about the whole ev situation at sheffield yeah but like the bottom line is nobody can do anything about it that's also a little different because here people can cut a couple of kilos just for dots and there it's world records where like unless you're going to be able to cut down a full weight class it's irrelevant but mm -hmm. like yeah nobody can really counter it so i was just, i was just wondering whether it was like okay this was planned but okay, so you're saying it wasn't it wasn't always the plan initially. It like yeah. went back and forth. It was planned, then then not planned, and then like okay, it's close enough. Okay, fine. Yes, yeah. So let's jump straight into the day. So we'll start with squats for all of you. So um, so we'll start with you, Joe. So you you um coming to obviously the one thing that the two things that are affected generally by the cut are squats and bench and squat even more just because you have less time to recomp. So like you're I mean, I don't know what you got, how heavy you got up to before you started lifting. I was 79, actually. I got the 78 and a half, like, in the first 15 minutes. And then I assumed I drank a little more water. And by then, I was around 79. Yeah, I recomp really hard. Okay, yeah. So coming to squats, you open light 255, obviously move like it should. Then you move up to 275, which I believe that is was your comp PR coming into this meet, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that also moves really well. Uh, you got two reds for depth. I'm not sure. I mean, the live stream angles were bad, so I don't believe they they showed a replay from the side, which is another thing that they got to do because that's like whatever. But um, it didn't look high to me, but you got two reds, obviously. Did you even like attempt to go to the jury there, or what happened um, after that? At first, no, because I went to the, um, the score table or the attempt table, I guess, and my coach went to the jury – and that was like, he was there for like two minutes. They just wouldn't give him an answer. So I just put in my attempt for 285 and 
Uh, they didn't overturn it, obviously, but um, I knew I had the strength to just sink 285, and obviously I got it. So, right. So they they didn't they didn't overturn, it, right? We know that, but I'm saying they didn't give an answer. Like they didn't they didn't just say no or the answer. Yeah, we, we finally got it, but um, yeah, after two minutes of asking. Yeah, I mean that's another thing that just has to be um worked better. This not just the USAPL thing, but also the IPF. Just in general, the whole jury system. Um, I know I think the IPF changed it a little bit where you're no longer able to like protest other people's lifts, but it makes it complicated because technically you only have one minute to give your next attempt. Yeah. And if you're unsure whether your lift is good, or let's say you think your lift is good and you put another you put in your new attempt and now it gets overturned, stuff like that. So I think there has to be a I don't know. I mean Technically, the reason why you have 60 seconds is because each you have to get your attempt in before the next person, right? The advantage of going later is that you also get to put your next attempt in later. But there has to be some way to have it where, like, you don't have to worry about the timing with the jury. I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. Uh, Adriana could probably have a better idea because she's actually a ref here. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure what the answer is. Okay, so, then, so then you went up to 285, which I assume was your plan third either way. Uh, yes. the, plan, the range was 285, uh, maybe 287 if I felt good. And I felt amazing as well. But the only reason I didn't take the 287 was simply because I got red lighted on the second. Right. Right. I mean, that's the smart, that that's definitely the smart thing in general. Oh, well, in general, when you're taking a, a decent jump, uh, two and a half less, like Lucky said last time is always, always a good move. It's, yeah. I mean, you're not going to risk uh, 12 and a half kilos for that extra two and a half. It sounds like a pretty, uh not high, high risk, I mean, high risk, low reward situation. So you went up and hit that 12 and a half kilo PR. So that was pretty big. You like, that was, I mean, I put, it put you in position for obviously what you finished off. Okay. So squats were good. And by the end of squats, I, you continue eating whatever, but you would be feeling good for bench. Yeah. Everything was good. So lucky. How about you? So you, you also, you open up 260, 260 was good. 275. 275 looked pretty good. Like I, I initially was thinking maybe you jumped to 290. Now, of course, you always uh, know exactly what you have on squats. Take 287 and a half. And that was literally, I don't know if you had like another kilo there. I think I could have done 290, but it would have been really, really hard. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I don't know what yeah. it looks like when you have like an RP 10, 10, like all out grind. But like that did not look easy. It didn't look like some... It didn't look like one where you're like, oh, he should have went heavier. It looked like one where it was like, okay, that was a good call. Uh, what what was your plan coming in? Because that two eight seven <laughs> and a half, that's that's what you hit at nationals, right? Yeah. So I think that maybe like two or three weeks out from the Arnold, I just dieted too hard, um, and I just hit too much of a too much of a deficit, and it kind of zapped my strength. Because I didn't really like the week of like water loading and cutting, I made weight pretty comfortably. Like I probably could have started, I could have been like a kilo heavier and, and still made weight. So I think I just lost a little bit too much mass, like dieting into the meat. And I couldn't really get that mass back. So you um, dieted from, from what weight? What weight to what weight were you dieting? Maybe from like 86 to 85. And I don't think I needed to do that. Yeah, I think uh, I, th I, I, I think I could have just made the cut from 86 to 82. Um, because like a week out from the meet, I hit 600. And the 600 that I hit was like just as difficult as like my third attempt. Really? So, yeah, I was I was kind of worried that I was going to go into the meet and like really shit the bet on squats. So the fact I was able to, to tie my meet PR. Um, I was happy with. <laughs> so is that something you're going to change with like trying to, to like cut from 80, do the water cut from 86? Yeah, I'm going to cut from higher, but also um, I think I just did the deficit too quick. Um, so instead of doing it over the course of like, like four weeks out to like two weeks out, I'm going to do it over the course of like, I'll start like two months out. Um, oh. Cause I don't have that much trouble making weight. Um, but I, I definitely think I can do better with just diet and, and, and eating. Not that I do super, super bad, but I have a good idea. Training's going well, like technique for all three is pretty well going well. Um, I think diet is just the last thing I need to do better on. So my question about that, I would ask is that like, I, I definitely get 
uh, the, the having a longer stretch to lose that weight just so you're not in a heavy deficit. And actually, um, somebody who, who's been doing that talks a lot about it. Wasker in the 59s, like yeah. he gets decently heavy and then he, he cuts for a few months, like three, four months coming into the comp. And this way he's like, but so I get there are people that do it, but I would just think at that point, isn't it like, aren't you just better off like just training at the weight you're going to water cut from this way you're not in a deficit during prep? Yeah, that's that's something I'm going to try as well as just sitting a little bit lighter. I mean, I, I didn't get super, super heavy. Maybe the heaviest I got was like high 86s, um, which I know it might sound like a lot, but there's some 82s who train at like 90. Yeah, um, yeah. But I didn't get super, super heavy, so I might, I'm might i going to try just training a little bit lighter, see how it goes. And that's why I think I can clean up my diet a little bit just – like like a year ago, my diet was a lot better than it was now. Um, like I said, not that it's super, super bad, but just in terms of eating the same thing every day, being more consistent in that aspect. Um, and I should retain a little bit less water, which will make me lighter. So I think I can do better in that aspect. So so your plan third was 287.5 or were you initially thinking um, – 290. No, we were thinking like 290 to 292. Um, the 287 was just something where it's like, I knew I could hit it no matter what. Right. I mean, to, at, once you made your second 275, the 292 would be weird. You don't usually see the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, exactly. the bigger jumps, second to third. Exactly. Every time I see it in a meet, I'm like, I'm like, this is probably a mistake. And usually if you because if Because if you miss it, you just look dumb. It's also just like, the only times I, I understand it is like a scenario where you miss your opener and you, you're hedging. So you go up a little bit, but not yeah. a full jump. And then you, but like, if you're taking a state, like your standard jump, like a 15 kilo jump and then go bigger, like you see it so many, like, I, I don't understand like why people, I mean, the truth is like, there's like, there's like the two general ways for attempts. I would say like the two, like, the best way probably like if you know yourself pretty well what you do is like just like exactly how you do it where you just take like the split jumps like 15 15 or 15 12 and a half and then you'll see that's probably the best if you know yourself and then you see also the common like theme a lot of people do is like the the big jump first to second and then they take a second that's like really heavy and then they kind of like end up taking like five second to third sometimes hit it sometimes miss it where like they're just doing like in my opinion kind of a bad hedge like they're taking like a heavy second and then putting themselves in a bad position for a third. Like they're, they're hedging as if they're going to miss their third. So then they like cap themselves on yeah. the third a little bit because it's kind of like, once you get to like heavy weights, like if somebody's squatting 300 kilos or whatever it is, like if you go like 275, 295, 300, that's just like, you're kind of killing yourself. But yeah. Okay. So, so that was like on the day, it was like maybe 290 and then you just played it a little safe with 287.5. And yeah, and I mean, with, your to PR. do, if we were going to do 292, we would have done 277 on the second. And that only would have been if, like, the opener absolutely flew. Okay. So that makes sense. Fine. Now, JJ, let's move on to you. So um, coming in, training for squat looked really good. Um, your 290 opener flew. You jumped to 305, which uh, eight kilos under your best. And obviously, it, it looked good until you stumbled. What What happened there? Yeah, so... Prepper squats are really good, but about two blocks out, I developed this really weird thing where out of the hole, I would lose so much positioning, and I'll kind of like fold forward. And then it got worse and worse to the point where on meet day, when I got out of the hole on the 305, I was just squatting like completely towards the rack. And as soon as I got out of the hole, I knew like I'm going to lose balance. I can't like, I can't stand up with this weight. And I just fell forward like that. Do you know if there's like something specific? Like I'm saying, is your did your positioning change a little bit or something where you're ending up like leaning more forward? Is it like you have you figured out any idea why it's happening or? Yeah, yeah, I've talked to people about it, and the reason that makes the most sense is I started to unrack the bar with my head, like with my eyes looking directly at my feet, which um, which causes my upper back to be rounded. And then I keep that positioning all the way through the squat to where on the way up, my upper back is just folding completely. I think that's the reason that I'm, uh, that is happening, but I, I think it's going to take a long, a long time to actually like fix the problem. You know what I mean? Have you 
always been unracked in that way, or is that something you've changed? I think I slightly, slightly like, um, you know, changed the, the angle to be lower and lower as time went on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think it's common. You see a lot of people like with the with the French bar positioning now, and with the French bar positioning, like if you get leaned forward a little bit, you're at a really awkward position, yeah. like where. So okay, so that's something you're going to work on, obviously. So so yeah. which happens? You were coming on, on your opener. You didn't did you feel it at all? Like did you? And my like, opener felt like that was the best two ninety I've ever scored in my life. Okay, so then just on your second, you're coming up, and that happens. So yeah. when that happens on your second, what was, what was your thought process in terms of, in terms of going up? Now, obviously, obviously it's like a weird balance. Cause like, it wasn't like you missed on a technical thing, like, like, I don't know, missing a command or something, but like, it also clearly wasn't like a, just a regular strength issue. So like what, what made your decision? Who, who's handling you by the way? Um, the owner of my gym, uh, Kilo SMP, his name is Sean Alexander. Okay. Right, right. So, um, yeah, so what, what, what made your decision to go up after that? It felt really easy to me. Like, beside the fact that I lost balance, the weight felt super light. So my mindset was just, you know, still go to my plan third. Or actually my plan third was, was 320. So it took off five keys to be safe. But, you know, it, okay. it just got worse Fine. and worse on my third anyway. So. Right. So your third actually, right, your third was interesting also because you unrack it. And then you walk out and then like before you settle, like you like start like you bobble or I, I'm, I couldn't tell exactly what it was from the stream, but like yeah. something happened there also. So yeah, I stumbled really bad that... and I almost fell. What? I stumbled really bad on the walkout and I almost fell. And I, right. I, th I thought I was going to fall, fall, but I caught myself. But my feet were super wide when I did so. And I, I just knew I couldn't fix it. I had to just go. So I, I just squatted anyways. I think the spider is actually like they caught you and restabilized you. Did they? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty I was sure really they surprised did. That I, that I didn't like completely lose balance on that. Which is like, you can actually, it's funny, you can actually get help, I think, on a squat walkout from spotters. Yeah, you can. Yeah. So, like, they caught the weight and they restabilized it. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's actually interesting. No, because I was wondering when it happened, just obviously it was like, okay, you stumbled on your second. Now you go up and now you stumble before you even, like, before you even, like, start. I'm, but then you actually went down, and I thought you were actually going to get the lift. You start coming up. Did you have the same issue where you felt like you were about to, like, lean forward, and that's, like, when you gave up? Like, what happened on the actual squat? Honestly, it felt a lot better than the second, but I, I think it was just too much. And my feet were too wide. The position was completely different. It was just too much weight. Uh, okay. And also, like you said, your feet were wide. Like, everything – it wasn't, like – it wasn't like everything was perfect. And then like you, it was just a little heavy. Like everything, everything was off. Like you stumbled, yeah. your walk out, your positioning was off. You couldn't really adjust it. I mean, I've never tried out adjusting my feet with uh, 700 pounds on my back. I don't know what uh, that would feel like, but okay. So then, so then you're just a little too happy on the day. Yeah, exactly. Did okay, you have fine. a, um, did you have to cut leading in because um, your weight is like, like relatively close to 100 uh no i didn't really cut i woke up at around 220 but i ate breakfast and i ended up spitting like maybe about a pound just because i oh, wanted okay. to keep it so it wasn't a weight problem at all okay yeah because we were just wondering if like if you had a hard cut it, it's kind of hard to tell like sometimes people just wake up near weight like like in your situation but in other times like being close to weight can kind of indicate that there was a hard cut so we just yeah. wanted to see if that might have played into effect like if you have a hard cut and you kind of some people can't feel their legs within the the first discipline like within squats so okay so yeah just just a little bit i mean like the second was so fast honestly so you clearly have the strength for it yeah i, I would say my squat prep was pretty was pretty good mm -hmm. besides the, the technical drift yeah okay fine so let's move on to bench now um, bench. Okay. So, um, start with you lucky. So bench was really good. I don't remember what you hit. What was the heaviest you hit in prep? I hit one ninety. You hit one ninety. Okay. Yeah. I typically um, have like a two and a half kilo drop off on bench. 
what do, you, what do you think the reason is? Just like a combination of squatting heavy before, cutting? Like what I mean, cutting commands. Um, so yeah, usually those two. Okay, How were so. the commands? They were fair. Impressive. I thought they were good. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think about the uh, the Nori uh, post the other day about how he doesn't understand how people talk about like each lift affecting the other ones? You know, I kind of agree. Um, unless it's something where it's like I've had really, really hard squats on me day, and my deadlift feels fine. The only one that I've only had to impact others is actually back cramping on bench. Where it's like if the back right. cramps on bench, it can kind of fry the deadlift a little bit but i would i'd generally agree like as long as something doesn't get injured or cramp up it doesn't really impact it right i mean i i would i would think that for the most part i agree but i think like it's more it's more specific where it would affect it it's not just like okay you went heavy now you can't go heavy again on a different lift like first off like especially for like if you're a conventional puller and then you grind out a really heavy squat like you're probably gonna like have some tax on your back like a decent amount if you're grinding out like a heavy squat pr like sumo will affect slightly less but and also just like yeah. i don't know depending on like sometimes some people some people's elbows get a little uh screwed up on squat and then that can affect them on bench i've seen people like so i i, I would say for the most part like when somebody's just hitting like a regular whatever rp10 max and like that's it like i would say generally it wouldn't really affect like unless you're like um fitness levels are really really bad um or like let's say like a different example like at like worlds if you're in one like the prime time like eight lifter flights where it's like a two hour meet and you're like a bigger lifter then like yeah, yeah. okay he's just like squatting 1050 will affect him when his third squat and third deadlift are like an hour apart like with no time like with just like no time other than warm-ups in between so like i would think in that case like then it for sure could affect you but I think in general, it probably doesn't. But I, was just I don't curious. think it's enough to make an excuse because you can prepare for all that stuff in training. It's like, That's okay, true. if you're bad on doing the lifts on the same day, you probably need some practice with doing the lifts on the same day. Right. So right. I feel like all that stuff, you, and even if, like, even Worlds, if you know it's going to be a fast meet, start training fast. So. Yeah, I mean, I do agree to that. I just think, I think the solution is not, I, I think they should fix that. I think yeah, uh, for sure. I, I think it makes no sense. It's like we have like the biggest show or what should be the biggest showcase because like, yeah, you have Sheffield and stuff like Worlds should be the biggest meet. Like a world championship should be the like, yeah, you're not you, there's different. You're not giving necessarily the same money. So like I can understand why somebody would want the other one from like a money standpoint, but from like a from like a legacy standpoint, titles, whatever, all that kind of stuff. Like there's nothing like that that beats like a world championship. So I, and people that are watching, like, it's the, like, Sheffield, yeah, you have, like, the best of the best. But, like, yeah, it's it's 16 lifters or whatever it is, 12 lifters, yeah, 12. Um, like, Worlds, you get to see, like, hopefully the best in each weight class. And they're all competing. And hopefully, definitely in some of the weight classes, you're having, like, really good battles. And people want to see people, like, push. And, like, having eight lifters, just not really, not really it. But... I honestly yeah. heard that it it might be because for broadcast, like we all saw it's the not... CBS. Really, I did thought. You read, I thought... Did you see? No, no, it might be. Did you see the Matt Gary uh, comment? I don't think so. I think I saw someone else say okay. that for Eurosport, we... they only have a three-hour block, like start to finish. Okay, so first off, those sessions take like two hours and like ten minutes. But also, read read the Matt Gary comment on like the post talking about the CBS deal. I, I think it was very insightful and. Basically, the point is that like the lifters, the lifters come first, and also like while yeah, we want to reach new audiences, like the bottom line is, we we have to have like the audience that's already somewhat watching be interested in watching, right? Like, I, like yeah, CBS. We might have some watch some people who like have never seen powerlifting and don't go to the gym, and they turn on their TV and they see it and they watch, right? But that that's yeah, it's a huge audience, right? You have hundreds of millions of people who have CBS. But you also have like tens of millions of people that go to the gym, right? And while they might not follow powerlifting or know much about powerlifting, they know what big lifts are, right? They've seen big lifts. And those people, like, they might not generally tune in. But when they tune in, they want to see people, like, smashing heavy weights. I think, like, instead of trying to, like, reach an audience of people that, that don't even lift, like, 
we should focus on the pretty big audience that does lift. Like there is a ton of people that go to the gym, right? There are like, there are like um, gym influencers, bodybuilders, stuff like that with like 10 million, 20, whatever. Seabomb has 30 million followers or something like that. Like there's a lot of people out there that like lift and, and have some knowledge of weight training. And it's a big enough audience that like, that's the audience we should try to capture in my opinion. Yeah, hundred percent. The fitness industry is massive and we're such a niche sport already. So just even expanding within our own realm is going to be massive for just overall viewership. So I definitely agree with you. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think we could get to the point where maybe we could expand more, but like, like I think trying to, it's one thing if we captured our market, but we just, we don't like, you just look at like, you look at some of the, the posts that go viral on like either King of Lifts or any lifting page. And you just see like the, the do you even lifts in the comments who are clueless about what powerlifting is. And there's so many of them. I'm saying like some of these posts, like Jesus's uh, world record squat on Instagram has, I, last I checked, it was like 25 million views on his page, not a repost, his page, 25 million views, 25 million people that watched the squat. Like what, and like Sheffield, yeah, it was crazy. What did they get? A few hundred thousand on the stream. Like I'm saying like, we got to, con we can convert like, some of that audience before we worry about randoms. But anyway, so I don't even know how I got distracted what I was talking about, but uh, we were talking, we were talking about bench, I think. Yeah. I think you're talking about Sean's bench. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Oh, we can get into Sean's bench. Uh, that's it. We'll talk about that later, but I was just talking, I was talking about Sean's uh, post about the, the lifts affecting each other. Okay. So getting back to you. So, so lucky. So you were saying you usually um, like have two and a half. Oh, less yeah usually like a two and a half kilo drop off right okay so opener 175 is good 182.5 second which was your previous pr yeah that's what i hit at nats right okay so then you you jump five to 187.5 for five kilo pr it was like that was pretty heavy that was like yeah that, that could have gone either way it, if if that would have got reds i would have i wouldn't yeah, i think it got i got one red right right yeah if the left side gave it a red i wanted it bad what was the red for? It was up and down. Oh, which okay. it was I, close. Honestly, it was, yeah, it's close. It, it, it like it wasn't super clean, so I, I think it deserved it. Okay, all of you have a better understanding than me. Can someone explain why we need to have up and down, even as a rule? Like, it's it, because it's like if you if you don't have an up down, I agree. Like, I don't like the rule, but. If you don't have an up down rule, then it's like someone could theoretically, let's say you go down the squat and you hit the hole and come back up and you could like technically like go back down in the hole and like try to get some momentum and get back up. Maybe on it's never, which is like, it's never going to be easier. It's never going to be easier to go down and have I guess to it just makes up. it look more like clean as opposed to like strong man where we see them do like hitching yeah. and all the all that stuff um, deadlift is the only lift i can see getting a potential benefit yeah lift it half uh, right up the ground and go back up and so yeah like it would look ridiculous to see someone like let's say you're like halfway through a deadlift or you mess or you like you start it and you kind of mess up you just go back down to the floor and like bounce up and try to like get the okay. lift like it just it just sounds like a little silly so i guess it's like I don't know. I think I think the rule is silly if it's like Lucky's bench where it's like it's it's such a like no, minuscule so, amount where it obviously like doesn't really affect it. Oh. So I don't know. I could I could see both sides. I do oh. like that it I do like that it makes everything look clean. Yeah, I like, agree. Yeah. So. No, so I I'll tell you I'll tell you why I ask. Meaning, yeah, it does make it look clean. And on deadlifts also, I there are times where there's like egregious down up. The reason why I ask is just because I, I don't have an issue with like the times where the, it does really go down and come back like significantly and come back up that like, I don't have an issue, like figure out a way to make that illegal. But I see just like a lot of times, not just at like high level meets, but even at local meets on squats and bench and even deadlifts where the bar doesn't necessarily come down, but like, let's say the lifter like literally grinds and they're like, they get yeah. like a sticking point and they stop. And like, Better referees will do a better job of making the right call. But even the best referees, it's very hard when, like, the lifter stops. Sometimes it looks like it goes down just because it stops. And it's like, yeah, 
I, I just don't, I don't really see, I, I don't think the rule does that much benefit. And I think it just makes it where like you get like a, a, a decent amount of like down up calls are just some of them controversial and a lot of them just wrong. So I just, I, I don't think, rule. yeah, that's what it is. Like you see all, like, yeah, like lot, wasn't, wasn't Jessica Bittner's deadlift one year? Um, like she didn't get her second or third deadlift. Like she kind of got screwed over by that. Or maybe they sure thought it was know. it was like supporting on the thighs, but she just so that's, does her. That's shakes. a little different. So that's yeah. a little different. Those, those that's a that's a separate call. That that call I get. I understand that one. Um, it, the down up, I just don't. I don't love just because you see so many like super close ones. Like I don't know. I'm just not. I'm not the biggest fan of it. But either way, so right. So you got one red for 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 up down down up whatever you want to call it. But then okay, so that was like that was like all that was like basically all out one eight seven five. Um, so you, you locked in the five kilo PR and two and a half under the gym, which you said is like to be expected. Yeah. Okay. So that, so you came out of, like coming out of bench. Um, I mean, things are going pretty well. You're six for six, which you basically always are. Um, not basically, which you always are. Um, yeah. got to correct that. And right. So coming out of bench, things are good. Um, you hit around, around your plans. You're feeling good. Um, yeah, pretty much. Okay, fine. I mean, I wanted so, to squat more, but that's right. whatever. Coming in, I, I mean, like, were you trying? Like, was your goal to hit like eight thirty? I was wanted, that... um, I wanted ten times body weight. Um, right. So that'd be so that'd be like eight twenty one in this game. Which they, okay. I could have done certain attempts to do that, but once we get to dead, this we can talk about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely we'll get into that. Um, okay, so Joe, now for you on bench. So, right, we're talking about, like, bench getting affected by the cut. And honestly, like, like I was impressed. Like, by, by bench, right, you open with 182.5, which, like, I look at him like, okay, hey, it's already pretty heavy. Like, your your best coming in was 190? Right, yeah, yeah, so yeah like, I, hey, I was most impressed by his bench. Yeah, same here. Right. <laughs> so yeah so no i i had seen like your your um training and like you had posted up some pretty big benches and presumably even though you cut like obviously you didn't water cut five keys so like presumably like some of that some of those uh big benches that were close to comp were coming at like closer close enough to weight where like you obviously like had retained strength through like whatever or earlier form of the cut but yeah, still that was like um, yeah no i haven't seen this is the second uh second case um so coming to Sheffield, everyone was talking about like Agatha and the cut, and she told everyone before. So everyone was discussing it, and people were like, "Oh, uh, how many kilos is she going to lose from her total? Is she going to do this, that?" And then like some people, whatever, everyone had different thoughts about it. And then a lot of people I kept hearing were talking about, "Oh, but her bench is going to suffer," and like she like easily destroyed the world record bench. So this, I guess, the second recent uh, um, case of like a big cut and like a massive bench like and a massive bench PR. so i mean yeah so 1825 great 195 moved well and then you went for 205 i thought you're gonna go 200 went 2025 um moved well i mean whatever like like it should um what was your what was your plan coming into bench for your third so the plan was 200 i was like 90 percent sure i was in low two but then after the squat, I told my coach, I was like, I feel really strong today. I was like, might as well bump it up two and a half. Um, Cause usually I have like some sort of like pec pain on the right side, like around like right here. Um, I didn't feel that at all. So I was like, all right, uh, pressers feel recovered. Um, squat went well. So that's a good sign that I have like just overall like less fatigue in the body. So I was like, all right, let's just bump up the opener to uh, two and a half more to 182. Um, and then we're gonna do the 12 and a half jump. Cause I'd like to do uh, a 12 and a half to either a 10 or a seven and a half. Um, and my coach was like, all right, so uh, if we want to go 202 and a half, we're going to have to go 195 to like really like, I guess, dial that third attempt in to see what we really have. So I was like, all right, um, let's just bump it up two and a half, jump to 195 instead of 192. Um, and clearly it worked out. Uh, the 202 felt really good in the hands, kind of messed up the unwrap a little bit, but it was fine. Um, it, I was able to rebound pretty well and execute the lift. So question, when did, when did you find out that Keenan was not doing this meet? Um, I found out, I'd say right when he posted, I say like, like a day after that. Cause um, my friend just told so, me, or my coach told what me. What was so. that? Was that like a week out or something? What was that? Something like that. 
and like a week out, like six days. Yeah. So did you have any sort of like game plan change or something after that? Because with you knowing that you were either going to cut all the way to 75 or at least like cut down to close to that and without Keenan in, like you went from, like I, I listened to some other previews and whatever, and they were saying Keenan was the huge favor. Obviously they were thinking that you were going to be weighing closer to 82. So that would obviously hit your dots and stuff. But um, I mean, I thought you were the favorite probably at like 77 either way, but um, once he was out, it kind of made it where if you were going to be weighing 75, like there was nobody really who could have came close in terms of like your top end dots. Like there was nobody, I don't think there was anybody else in this meet who was like capable of like 585 plus dots. Yeah. I think, the, I think that I can, pull. why? I said off the opener pull, I already won based off dots. Yeah. And I, I was actually going to get to that later, but I'm saying, so did that change like your game plan in terms of attempt selection? Like you could be a little more aggressive because. Like, honestly, with your seconds, I think you would have one on all your seconds on all lifts. Yeah, uh, my game plan was the same um, because I knew if I hit my top ends or at least in the range that I had, uh, even a fully healthy Keenan was not going to beat the dot that I was going to shoot for. Uh, I didn't even like hit the range I wanted on the day, um, which was I'm still OK with it because I still took home the, the, the win. But um, yeah, if I hit my top end range or even the bottom end of the range I had planned, uh, even a fully healthy Keenan was not going to beat it unless he cut an additional like five kilos on top of that and hits some astronomical top ends. That was the only way I'd see him actually beating me. So. Okay. Fine. So, okay. So bench. So, right. So bench one better than even could have been planned. Then you come into deadlifts, everything's set up. Okay. So that was good. Now, JJ, for you bench, right? 190 moved like a warm up. Second attempt, 2025. Um, it was actually funny. Uh, the commentator, the comment after you hit your second at two or two five, the commentator is like, and J whatever. He's like, oh, um, opener moved well or something. I'm like, bro, this isn't the opener. <laughs> but yeah, I heard that. But yeah, so but the front, but it was funny though because it did move. Like, I wouldn't say like a, like an opener necessarily, but like it did move really well. All right. So your your best um comp bench coming in was uh, two or six, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, like, how were you feeling after that? Because, like, that moved really well. Then, like, you jumped seven and a half, right? Twelve and a half for second, seven and a half second, third. And, like, I thought, like, yeah, like, that's in the tank pretty easily. What happened there? I'm not going to lie. After squats, I just didn't want to be there anymore. I was so done with the knee. I was so upset. And on yeah, top I mean, of that, I was, like, like, my second bench, I was starting to feel alive again. I was, like, I'm already here. Let me just, like, you know, give it my all. And then I was getting ready for my third, and then... I had to sit there for, I don't know, it felt like 10 minutes because of the Sean Nuri situation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah you got delayed by that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, since, since you're the last one on bench, we could just discuss that all now. Like, um, what happened? And, like, from all your standpoints, like, obviously, you guys are just focusing on yourself and not, like, the other lifters. But, like, you can see what's going on. And, like, I had, could not figure out what was going on from the live stream. Um, like, what was happening? Like, how did... Like, somebody tell me what happened there, because I don't know what happened. From my perspective, I had no idea what was happening. I just assumed he was, like, fighting a ref, because I, I just heard a bunch of yelling and, uh, like, a bunch of stuff going on. I oh, that would be more fun if, if he went out there and fought the ref. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been Sean versus some, like, 70-year-old uh, equipped world champion from 1974 or something. It would have been a fun fight. But, um, so, like, I mean... Like everything just got delayed and stuff. Like I don't know. He took his attempt. I don't. I don't know when he was taking. I don't know what here's, was going here's on. Here's what he said. He said, um, so he did his opener. Whatever, no problems. He went to his second. Um, I'm reading his recap, so I hope this is right. Well, I'm assuming it's right. Um, on his second attempt, two ten, the judges said his grip was not correct, so they contested it and got a relift. So his first relift, I don't, I don't, and I don't even know exactly. So this when. is so this is the weird part. Yeah, he did, he did his second attempt. They didn't give him a relift. They give his third attempt. They give him reds on his third, and then the crowd boos them, which is like yeah, incredible. I... Were you at Nats? Yeah, you were at Nats. Me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was. That's yes. hilarious. Yeah, because I think I saw you there. Um, like they got booed again, like they did at Nats, which I've never seen before. At Nats, I actually remember, I don't remember exactly what happened, but it was like <clears> when <throat> his attempt, 
got reds like I was in the back and I just hear someone behind me say like oh man that's always something and I just, <laughs> I just Okay, like yeah. could not stop laughing So, anyways so, so, go on so he did his second attempt. He didn't get a relift. He did his third. They give him I thought he reds did on get his... a relift on his second I thought he No, got no, two no. relifts They didn't give him his relifts until after he did his third attempt, which is really strange. Are you talking Yeah. about the Arnold or at I'm talking about the Nationals? Arnold. Yeah, yeah, here. Because they Both gave him of two his attempts relifts. in a row. Right. That's what I was like. I was trying to figure out what's going on. Like, I'm looking at the stream and I'm like, I I started watching the stream like in middle. So I'm like, I'm like, um, whatever, skipping and catching up. And then I get to that point and I'm like, what's going on? Like, he's going, he's not going. Like, what? Like, I think he went once, Wait, but like, I thought he, went. I thought he got two relifts with his second He did. attempt. Oh, okay. And So, he was just no, no, like, no. So he, so he hit his opener as normal. yeah. He had a second. His second didn't count. They went to contest. They didn't do anything. They hit, they hit his third, and then they went to contest. And then after hitting his third, they gave him two relifts. But one of the relifts was his second attempt. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Yeah, both which okay. both relives which happened after his third. which didn't make sense because it's like. I don't know why they can't just overturn his third, make that count, and then give him a relift. Or because it's it's Right. almost like they made a, it's almost there's no way that these are actual rules because they basically went back in time and said they were wrong at the time of his second attempt, but they told him that at his third attempt. What was the call for? Um, He it said was it fingers was his, and on um, the bar. his grip, One was like yeah. one was One his of them. grip, one was his thumbs need to be wrapped Yeah. around the bar. I swear, it's not just him. It's his lifters. I've been to, like, a bunch of local meets in New York So what happened where he's was handling. they they made And a every rule time. change and they didn't announce it. Oh, okay. What do you mean? So they changed, they changed, so do you remember, like, beginning of the year and then they made the rule changes about, like, the fingers wrapped around the bar, but then they changed it back. But then they, like, they changed it again, but they never announced it. So it's like, how are you supposed to know rules What do if you they mean? don't, I thought like, it was the, I thought it was the same. I'm pretty sure they made like a change to the rule book, but they didn't announce it. That's what Marcellus said. Oh, Cause okay. he's, he's super up to date on that stuff. Um, and that's why they gave him like a relift. Okay, interesting. I thought it was the same situation at Nats where like the judges were saying his grip was not correct, but then the jury was like, this isn't even a rule. <laughs> and then they and then he got And a then relief. they made the rule change, yeah. Oh, okay. No, Yeah, but because I don't know. because I, I was talking to Marcellus and he said there was a certain rule they changed, but they didn't announce the rule change. So there was no like way that people could have known they changed it. Right. So I don't understand. So if Marcellus went to the jury after the second, why did he not get a relift or the second one overturned? That's that's like the question. He just got a relift. No, but He he did. didn't. He No. didn't. He got both the relifts, Adriana, happened after a third. You know, Oh, okay. I was, you know, as like a competitor, I was kind of sitting there and I was like, you know, if he misses these, it's not the worst thing. Oh, I'm saying you're right. He was your direct competitor there, but like, Were you watching? I, Like, obviously you were benching, but yeah, were you like seeing what was no, going I was, on? I was watching. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you already hit your third and then you were able Yeah. to like see what was going on. Yeah, so I don't understand. So, right, so his first relift was right after his third? No, he was at the end of the flight, I believe. Oh, okay. So they, So they put him at the end of the flight, and then they gave him, like, four minutes after that again. So, like, he, yeah, he because took if his you third. follow yourself, you need the time. Yeah. Right. So he took his third, and he was like, like I think third to last in the flight. Like there was still Kyle De Leon, and there was still um, somebody. Um, right. So he was Dominique. like right at the end of the Dominic. All right. So he was like like third to last or something. Like a couple lifters went, took his first retake, and then waited a couple minutes and took his second retake. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So he got to take two ten, like three times in in like six minutes. But it was really strange. After hitting his third, they let him go back and retake his second, which just Yeah, makes it, no sense. the whole thing makes no sense. I mean, there isn't even like technically, like let's say they they went back to the third and overturned it as good, and they wouldn't give him another. And the whole thing was, I don't know, it was a shit show. That's that's for sure. And it's funny he kept on getting reds from that 
from one side ref just every time. Right. I think on the commentary, they kept saying, like, they thought it wasn't, like, touching his chest. But, like, I mean, that has happened at, at Nats, I think, in, like, 2019 yeah. or something. He just decided he got he got whites. He got whites on one that never touched his chest. That was that was uh, pretty funny. But, um, yeah, but, like, the bar doesn't have to ch- touch evenly on his chest. As long as it touches anything, it's good. So, whatever. I mean, yeah, because he's good. never, like, even across his chest. But that's not right. a rule. Like, like that, so that yeah. wasn't what was happening. I think the no, I know that's what, that's what the commentator said. But um, yeah, yeah. The truth is, everyone was confused. I, I can't blame. Yeah, them yeah, yeah. Confused, that's fair. But that just right. Like I wouldn't have known what was going on either if I was commentating that part. So yeah, but um, yeah. So wait, JJ, you went before or after Sean? I went after his uh, third attempt. Uh-huh. Uh, so I went after. We both had two. So you were right. Right, so you were right after him and in the middle of this whole confusion thing. Yeah. So then you went out, and then you said, like, you were just, like, not really down at that point. But he was, like, ready to lift. And then... Yeah, because yeah, like, yeah, yeah. there was a little and then, like, and then, like, three or four minutes of discussion went by, and then they announced that he'll get a relift for his second hand. Like, I got this, um... I got this... I don't know if y'all can see. I got this screenshot from the live <laughs> <laughs> Rome was so pissed like and they just that that was when like JJ was about to go and they had to like talk for like four minutes like we saw the jury talk to the refs I don't know it was just weird like something Funny. always weird happens with Marcellus them. like his first meet with Sean got the full Sean Noriega experience yeah <laughs> yeah legit. like I honestly had hope that like everything would go smoothly because um I wasn't able to watch live but I was like looking at lift and cast and I saw that he got his third squat. So I was like, okay, maybe maybe, maybe this is the super meet. I don't know. And then I just no, checked no. lifting cast and I just see like something's going on with bench. I'm like. <laughs> well, you have to learn the, the new Sean special is he tries to get three squats by like opening with like 50% of his max. I'm saying like he's opening with like yeah, 255. Yeah, no, he didn't even like, get three squats, but I mean, he got his third. So I was like. I know, yeah. I know. But I'm saying like. I think it was his last meet, whatever it was, where he got like three squats because he opened the like also like two, like yeah. If you open like he's opening with like like fifteen kilos under what he opened with like the last like bunch of years. So yeah, he's just ba- he's basically just trying to take his his old second his his old seconds as thirds. So maybe I mean it would have yeah. I mean if he would have got his third pull, he would have got eight forty and. Yeah, I think if he went to got screwed over on bench, he probably could have done another five. So that's like eight forty five. Yeah, I, he almost had to me. I <clears> I thought he was gonna get that deadlift, and I thought I was like, oh, he's finally gonna break the eight twenty five curse. But um, I mean, I would have loved for him to do it. I, I I was hoping he waited. In, oh, for some reason, he like insists in weighing over eighty two point five by non nationals, which made sense previously because he was still playing on competing. So like, he wanted to keep records, but. At this point, this is last USAPL meet, so I'm not sure why he did that. Also, well, he, was I, hand- I was really- he was handling yeah. people like the session before. Right. I, mean, I was hoping, I was hoping, he, I knew he wasn't going to be under 82.5. I was hoping he was going to be under 83. And then, like, yeah. somehow finally, and so, like, get a 42 and a half, finally, like, like te- for, for like literally one week, uh, be ahead of Russ. That's what I was hoping. But of course, all the, all the Sean factors happen. And yeah, I mean, we'll see a, a nine for nine meet maybe i don't know never but who knows <laughs> anyway wait so so jj while you're like waiting around did that like mess up your like third bench or you're just like sitting there like you're like hey i just want to get this done like bench is feeling solid but like and then you're sitting there waiting uh i don't want to say i would have got it like the 202 like it didn't move i saw i saw the video and it moved okay but it didn't feel all that great so i probably would have missed it anyways but i'm just saying that didn't help for sure uh-huh so that right that was I mean 210 was your plan third and you just didn't adjust and like i mean i yeah. i would have i would have put in 210 also after 2025 but okay right so okay so let's uh move on to deadlifts i guess so deadlifts let's start with you joe so joe you hit your opener 310 um you at that point I don't know if like you guaranteed the win then, just because you still don't know exactly what everyone had. But like at that point, it was uh, you were in pretty good position to win. So, 
And then um, you move up to 332.5. Pretty big jump, right? Your best is what your, your best is 340. I did 340 a year and a half ago at a regional meet. Right. What'd you pull at Nats? Um, 338, I think. Okay, so are you still meaning you haven't gotten past that 340 comp yet? So, all right. Okay, so you move up to 332.5, which is a pretty big jump. And that, like, guaranteed, like, at that point, it's guaranteed, obviously. Nobody's nobody's coming close to that. Um, and that also put you at, that was 820, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so, okay. So, puts you a pretty uh, nice total. And then you jump to 341. What, I don't even know that what that number, that's, that's, the, that's the record. Yeah, that's uh, that beats Taylor's three forty and a half that he did. I think like twenty nineteen. That's oh no 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 twenty twenty one. Yeah, Daytona. His, his super yeah, okay, performance. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Okay. Fine. So you're just trying to take uh, take some take one of his uh, records before you leave. Yeah, at least leave with something. Right. No, because I was trying to figure out what it was. At first, I was like, "Is that six hundred dots?" And then I checked, and it wasn't. I was like, "Okay." Like I know that doesn't break. Like. I'm, I knew it wasn't by his, near his total because he squatted 303 or something that yeah. meet. So I'm like, I knew you couldn't be at the total. So, okay, it was just to take that deadlift. And then, I mean, like, coming into, like, your prep for deadlifts were pretty good. Like, you hit you hit this in the gym. I did. Um, so, which happened? Like, you were just gassed or what? So, um, when I hit the 341 in the gym, that's after my 285 squat. That's after three sets of a four with over 500 pounds as well on squat for back downs, which I've never repped over 500 for back downs. Um, that's after six sets of bench as well. So I was very fatigued going to the pull. Um, I got it. It moved very comfortable. I'd say, I didn't think I had like 345 or anything, but it moved like how I expected it to. And, uh, based off that, I know my Dell of tapers a good 10 to 15 kilos. So I was really amped and excited for like the meat, obviously. I think, I think my range was 350 to 355. But after that pull or on that pull, um, I don't know what happened in my back, but um, something moved in there. And uh, basically I had sciatica throughout the rest of taper. And I during my taper week, um, my one week out mark, I was trying to warm up to my taper single, which was 640. Uh, I couldn't even break the floor with 551. So uh, I had no idea how delves were going to perform on the day. Um, all, I, all I could do was basically pray and just not deadlift until the meet, which I did um, two days or three days out. Um, I did do some sort of deadlifting. I got 550 for one, and then I did like two reds for back downs. It did not move good at all. <laughs> but at that point, I was like, I was getting massages every day for my girlfriend. Um, I got uh, manual therapy done. I got cupping done, Epsom salt bath daily, mobility daily, and just basically praying that my back would feel somewhat good on meat day, which it did. Like I felt tender, but at least the sciatica wasn't there. And uh, on squat, especially when I unrack, I Definitely felt it during the taper week, uh, right, right down the legs and in the hole. A uh, bench wasn't affected, but um, I was able to manage the squat taper weight. I did like 550 on my taper week, um, but I could not, I couldn't even deadlift 550 after that as well. Cause I do a primary SBD. So all my big pulls and benches and squats are on the same day. But yeah, I had no idea how deadlifts were going to perform. The goal was 350, 355 to secure um, the 840 range, 845, and to secure a deadlift world record and the 600 dots. But, um, yeah, I just wasn't there in the day. My back seized up, um, especially after that second pull. I knew I didn't. I knew I couldn't pull anything after that. Like you could have loaded like two fifty on the bar, it wasn't coming off the ground. Um, but I was like, all right, screw it. I already won. Might as well at least try to take home a record. And obviously, it didn't move. Um, and now I'm basically suffering. I haven't dealt with it since. So, yeah, my back's pretty messed oh, wow. up. Yeah, yeah, that's rough. I mean, also sometimes it's just like hard. Like the motivation is kind of like a little bit gone at that point. Like. Yeah. You already won. You already secured like a massive total. It's like, like it's one thing if like you thought it was, it was a decent chance. Like let, let's say you thought you could have loaded whatever it was to like I don't know hit eight thirty eight like the like to like break Taylor's number or whatever. But like at that point, like yeah, it would have been for the record deadlift record. But like that's not like the biggest deal. Also, also it's not even that Taylor's deadlift record at seventy four, not seventy five. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So whatever. I mean, so it was gone, but like at that point you were basically done. You said everything, your back was acting up and okay, fine. Mm -hmm. So still you hit your second, came away with a fat check. Yeah. Um, we'll discuss some more about that like afterwards, but okay, fine. Um, lucky now for you, deadlifts were interesting. Um, I was confused initially, but I went through the numbers like 
actually before this, just to figure out like what happened. So you opened 305. Obviously, that was moved how it should. 335 moved really well. Now comes to your third. Now, um, I was trying to figure out why you loaded that number. And I am assuming that the answer is it was assuming Dominique would miss his third to pull in the second. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Okay, fine. So Which... at first I was like, look, I was looking at the number and I'm like, I don't understand like this way more <clears> than because if I before. wanted to take third, I could have pulled three forty two point five to beat Sean. Right, which, right. That's which I had in I had like two minutes to decide because well not I had a little bit more than two minutes, but basically Sean and Joe both went. So if I needed to make an attempt change to go lower, um, because if I wanted to beat Sean immediately after him, I could have just put in three forty two point five. Right. So yeah, so that's that was my question. So, um, first off, what did you come coming into the day? What did you have your top end on deadlifts as? Like three fifty 350 to three fifty five. Okay, so like that was right in the range. I think and... my second, my second was it, it moved, but it was just a little bit difficult to where I think it gassed me a little bit. I think if I would have gone like maybe three thirty for my second, it would have been a bit better. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, it would have been a big jump, but wait. So, but either way, so coming in though, so coming in, what was your like your game plan in terms of not just deadlifts? In terms of like, were you was your goal just like, okay, I know I'm gonna hit my three squats, I know I'm gonna hit my three benches, I'll pull my second deadlift, and then I'll just see what to load on the third based off placing. Then was that like your whole like game plan? Yeah, pretty much. Because I didn't. So I mean, you obviously you I don't ended... want to. I don't want to go into a meet like planning on missing an attempt, of course, but. It's the Arnold, like it doesn't, of course it matters because there's, there's money on the line. Um, but I feel like it's a meet where you kind of just go all out. Um, like I wasn't right. worried about a, a total PR or whatever. I would rather like, like I had a chance to go for third and I'm pretty sure I could have gotten to third regardless. But I saw an opening for second and I was like, you know what, I got to go for it. Well, so either way, so coming in, obviously you weren't necessarily making adjustments based on other people, but did you think you were going to be in the spot you were like, uh, like, honestly, like Dominique, I was like impressed and surprised by his performance. Like every meet that he's in literally, like, I remember all the nationals, every time he's in a meet, I remember always checking like forecasted at the beginning. And like, he's always forecasted in like first, like, like all the meets he did in 93, like the first kick a bunch of times in nationals. Cause he always just opens really heavy and then just like goes like five for nine. And like, ends up with like let's say his openers add up to like 820 he'll add up with like 840 like he'll only put like 20 kilos on from second and thirds so like i thought it was the same thing here like he put it in his, in his openers and he was forecasted i'm not sure he might have even been forecasting first at one point but either first or second but i'm like okay he's gonna fall down like throughout the meet and he actually just like he went eight for nine and uh what was his total he totaled 882 yeah, 882. yeah so i mean he would have got 890 if he hit his third bench what happened that I didn't see? Like, was that? A I don't know. I, I can I can watch it back. I have the stream up. Yeah, so I'm not sure. But um, and it was I at ninety one. Maybe. I don't quite sense. remember. But anyway, it was at ninety one point two two. That was his weight. So yeah. I mean, I guess he's up there with all the with all the ninety threes now. We have another another one to add to the to the list. Um, like it's pretty. Yeah. The the US ninety threes. We got like. Seven of them capable of like 880 plus at this point. I don't know if we actually have seven, but like, I don't know. But yeah, so were you expecting him to be like looking in? Did you, did, were you like thinking about him when you were like thinking of like, yeah, obviously, I think if, if he hit his lifts, um, it's gonna be hard to beat. Um, based off his second deadlift, I thought he was gonna miss his third. And looking yeah, at his, his third, was a, looking his at second his was a third, grind. I mean, he got his third and he got it up. I'm surprised it got all whites. Um, yeah, the com the commentator was like, "Yeah, I don't think this is gonna be a good lift." So I don't think it was like a a bad decision waiting for him to hit his third um, and try to beat him because I I still could have had a chance at third if I would have hit my third attempt. Like I would have gotten third place if I hit my third attempt. Right. Other things I could have done, I could have done. Um, three forty seven point five, which I think was probably my top end on the day. I'm pretty confident I could have hit that. That would have given me eight twenty two point five, and 
would have given me third place. And that would have given me 10 times body weight, but it's like, it's not the cool 10 times body weight. Because right. It's more so like, oh, I weighed in at 82.09. Right. I mean, I guess the truth is like the, the, um, the general decision at that point, when you have to decide what to put in for your third is, are you trying to pull for second? Or are you trying to pull for third? Yeah. I mean, I, and I, I, I don't know what the, second. I don't know what the, um, cash, what, what was second place? What was third place? So third place was 5k. Second was 10. And what was fourth? Uh, like 2000. Okay. So it was a $3,000 jump for that. Yeah. versus seven. Right. No. Cause like, I'm just like thinking like, once when you're in that spot, like I I guess like the truth is I also probably would not have expected Dominique to hit 350. But it's just like Yeah, because once he hits 350, I'm kind of just stuck there. <laughs> right. Th- then you're screwed, right? Then that's why the attempt, like if you just look at it and you don't actually like didn't watch it, like the attempt yeah, doesn't look like I had a few sense, people but... ask me. Right. So I right. So initially I'm, I was looking at it like after I'm like, wait, what was this attempt? And then I'm like, okay, that obviously is what it was. But, um, right. I don't know. I probably just would have gone for third just because like third was like such a given, like, like 342.5 is something that like, like there's probably like a 97% chance of you hitting versus like 352.5 is like, even on like your best day is probably like a 50, 50, just because it's heavy enough. Like, where it's, there's no sort of guarantee. I don't know. What you hit in the gym? I mean, I've hit 350 before. Oh, okay. And I've like since I've pulled three fifty, I feel like I've made a lot of deadlift progress. Um, I mean, coming in, coming to that attempt, you thought you thought you like you have this, like you thought it was there, or like you thought. It was, yeah, like, I, mean, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have loaded it. Well, I knew it was no, gonna I be don't, difficult. No, I, I don't mean right. No, I don't mean like a. I'm not asking if you were like putting a YOLO random number on, like as if you're pulling for some like like random thing. I mean, like like it was an attempt you were confident in or it was an attempt it's like okay this is like what i need to at whatever theoretically have pulled for second and like i could do it i mean it, like our plan for the day was 350 to 355 but more so okay that was like our our top end we discussed but more so our plan was just like okay we're gonna go hit our squat and benches and once we get to pulls we're just gonna load up something for second or third so yeah so to to, to ask further if you go back if you're in the same situation again would you have taken the same number again yeah okay fine that, that's what i was basically asking so okay because yeah, you because said I, it was I, hard I, I, I mean you had a couple minutes but like i mean even with the time to think like you think that's the, like that was go, pulling for a second or obviously you, you couldn't you would never have known that that dominic would hit it. so like with with the with all the information you had at the time you think you're happy you're happy with your decision at least not the outcome but the decision you think was the correct decision yeah, I yeah, going back, I don't I don't know. It's probably gonna be the last Arnold, so might as yeah, well just, no, just it, it it is. Yeah, might as well just just go for it. So Okay, fine. Okay, so Yeah, we'll, I don't we'll, know. So we'll get more into the later stuff soon. So okay. Um and then JJ, so you you hit your opener three thirty. Um you jumped to three fifty five, which is like right below your comp best and it moved pretty well. And then 375, well, that was that like a, a placing jump? I don't like, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I forgot the number that it would have pulled me into. I think like sixth. I'm, I'm not sure, but yeah, it was just for placing. I think it was sixth, yeah. Like at the time, I don't quite remember. Yeah. Uh, and what did you hit um, in the gym? Oh, actually, in? That, no, it would have pulled them actually, into fifth. It, yeah, oh, fifth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So what I got him on like the podium. Yeah. Is that well, is that a number that that was like initially you you had planned? Like I mean, three thirty opener. I don't know. Was three thirty always your opener? Or you didn't you didn't make any changes, right? No, three three thirty was a plan for my opener. So and so three seventy five. So oh three fifty was the plan for the second. Yeah, three fifty was the plan. Oh, so you ended up you you jumped the second a little bit just to see if like maybe like you could pull something bigger for your third to move for placing. Yeah. Uh huh. So obviously, like your plans all got adjusted because of like squats and bench to an extent. But yeah. so, w- what did you think your top end was on the day? Like initially, what was like your initial plan for third, like three sixty five, something like that? Honestly, the plan coming in was just to see what I could, uh, how well, how well I could place. It depended on everybody else. Just like squeeze into like third, fourth. If my squats and bench went well, then yeah. Right. I'm. 
not that it works this way, but I'm just wondering what dots that would have given you if you hit your third squat bench and then 365. That would be. Let's see. Yeah. Plus his third, plus his third deadlift, or no, no, because that was that was like a reach. I'm saying let's we'll like start three seventy. With... So yeah, well, let's see. Yeah, so eight ninety five. Well, or eight ninety nine. Yeah. Five fifty one. Five. So would have put him. Oh, wow. So would have put him that, right around. Like right, that, right over. What you yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So like, if you had hit your, if you had hit like your lifts, which were all like theoretically reasonable, that would have put you right in that, in that, it would have put you right in that bat, like the third, fourth, that battle. Okay. So the game, everything was reasonable. Just like, obviously you had the the hiccups with squats, the whole thing with moving your positioning and then bench, whatever happened there. And then deadlifts, you just like YOLO'd. Yeah. So you don't you don't know where your top end on deadlift actually was. What was the heaviest you hit in the gym? Um, my the plan was the plan. Um, my heavy single was supposed to be the block after I doubled three sixty, but I was just so proud that I I missed the three seventy. So and then I was just building back up to the meet. So I I, I assumed that I'd be around three seventy two. Uh -huh. so I, I failed my my heaviest deadlift with Fred. Right. Okay. I mean, did you you thought the three seventy five was potentially there? Like it wasn't like it wasn't like you got stapled. It just was like you just it was just too much. But like it wasn't like it wasn't like insane. I mean, no, I, I wasn't really confident going into it to be honest. Uh huh. You were just trying to break the curse of whoever said you'll never lift more than uh, eight fourteen or whatever. <laughs> I mean, he still hasn't got it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Right. He he was trying to. He was trying to break. Dude, the curse. I, I swear, it's it's a junior curse, man. Like I'm, I'm feeling the, the washed up junior allegations already. Oh, oh come on. you're too, you're too young to be, bro. Yeah, we'll you're see. the young, you're, you're younger than Joe, right? Yeah, yeah. Joe's like 21, yeah. 22. How old are you? 21. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're young. Yeah, you're the youngest of you three who are all, who are all still have time in the juniors. I mean, yeah. You can't be you can't be you can't be feeling that washed up junior yet. Maybe maybe if maybe if you still haven't pulled more than than uh, three than three fifty seven when you're aging out of the juniors, then maybe you could feel okay, the curse. Okay. But yeah, too too early. Okay, fine. So I guess let's just uh, talk a little bit about like certain the future for yourself, USPL, all this stuff. So um, we discussed it for like a second, but this is probably I mean I think this is the last Arnold ever. Um, which kind of sucks just because like the Arnold was like one of the coolest meets to, to go to in general. But um, with the Arnold being gone and just the, the shift out of the USAPL in general, like what do you guys all think? What do you think like the, what's happening next? Like do you think the Pro Series is done? Probably not because they still gave out Pro Cards. So there's going to be some right. things going on, I believe, just not at the Arnold. Right. No. So I was uh, I was actually talking to Steve uh, about this the other day. Um, right. So I assume they're not completely done with the pro series just because, right, they're still trying to get out of these pro cards. But like, I can't imagine that they keep up these payouts just because, I mean, the pro series, like in all honesty, like, yeah, it's nice. You got to check. But like, it's been a flop. Like they haven't done advertising for it. It hasn't been hype. Like, I don't know how many viewers there were, but it wasn't a lot. Like, I mean, th I think it's like the pro series could have been a really good idea how they did it was terrible. Like just a ton of miscommunicate or just bad communication and just like not, not necessarily handling it properly. I wonder though, like if they do keep it like, yeah, Sheffield is nice and world is nice, but like to win Sheffield, you have to literally be like potentially the best lifter in the world. Whereas like at this point, like, I mean, five, there was, 566 dots came in second place it was 10 grand to get 566 dots which like i don't know what that would get you at chef i mean obviously not by dots but like i would think that certain people like if you're in a weight class where where you're probably not going to get the world spot but you're like competitive like i would just like if they pay out stay the same come back to usapl and collect the bag i don't know what, what are your what are your guys thoughts on 
the whole like future of the pro series and all and the lack of Arnold, all that. I'll go first, Lucky. You can go. Yeah, Lucky, you go first since you're the one who said that you're almost for sure staying another year. Uh, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm signed up for Nats. That's my plan is to do Nats. Um, but if there's a better option, I'll definitely leave. Um, we'll see. Um, I I don't know what they have planned. Um. Yeah, I don't have too good of an answer for this question, to be honest. So you're you're just you're kind of like I'm saying you're just unsure of what the what what's about to happen. Yeah, uh, I don't need like we'll see how my like I had a lot of good my training was really really good leading into this meet. Um, so I think training will probably just pick back up, and then I'll just manage. Not even that I got too heavy. I'm just gonna manage body weight smarter into the meet. Um, and I still think I can get a meet in there at like 8.30 to 8.40. And who knows, if I do that and it goes well, I'll probably just stay in the class. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I wasn't like disappointed in my performance, but I wasn't necessarily happy. Like I could have taken a, I could have taken a smarter or a, like a smaller third and gotten like 8.22.5 on the day, which still would have been like a 10 kilo total. Um, so I just need to just need to train, see how training at like 85, 86 kilograms goes. So Yeah, I mean I would say your top end on the day was like pretty clearly the strongest it's ever been. I mean you had yeah, two and I, I, I was definitely three kilos this, under your best with like I was definitely the strongest I've been. Um but like compared to training, uh it wasn't as good. So Okay, so you have some things to at least you have some ideas on what you want to switch. Yeah, switch it's into. yeah, it's it's like 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 I said, training was good, um, but it's not like I went like a hundred percent perfect with diet, a hundred percent perfect with all other variables. If it was something that was like okay, diet was a hundred percent perfect, every variable, sleep was perfect, outside activity was perfect, and I came into the Arnold and I did that, it's like okay, I'm just gonna go up, but I haven't perfected okay. everything yet. So, so next meet is nationals. Yeah. And that's when I really will try to perfect every little thing. Okay. So, so next meet nationals. And then you'll see from there, like, obviously what, like, by, I mean, that's in nationals is in September. It's like 26 weeks or something. Yeah. It's like half a year. So by then, hopefully there'll be some more news on just like what's going on with the pro series and everything and like what the plans are moving forward. And then, that could help you potentially decide after nationals. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting because if they don't do it, they're just going to have a bunch of extra money. Um, but right. who knows what they're going to do if they're, if they're going to save up that money and wait like a year and just throw up a big meet and hope to get some people back or I don't know. I doubt it. Yeah. Because... I mean, I don't, I don't mind. Like, honestly, at this point, the way the way, the bad way that they've run the pro series, I'd rather them just give out money at nationals. Yeah, I mean like, they're gonna they're gonna put out money and there's gonna be some decent lifter who goes to take it. Right, that's so. what I'm saying. Like, honestly, even more on the women's side. Like, I was talking to a couple of people, and it's like the women like mostly shifted over earlier than the men. But like at this point, like not to like diminish the performance, but let me just what was the the winning dots for? It's like five. The women uh, five forty six. Yeah, five forty six. Which. Yeah. Like, yeah, that that's good, but, like, there's probably – there's I would say there's probably five lifters who are not – who switched over to Path to America who aren't even going to make it to Worlds with the higher dots. Forget about the ones who are going to become world champions. But, like, like, if I was a lifter and it's like, okay, I'm battling where, like, I'm, like, the underdog to even make it to Worlds, and if not, then I'm just kind of, like, stuck in this no man's land and, like, where I'm, like, doing some small meets or, like, I can walk away with, like – Honestly, a perfect example, like, I mean, I hope, like, for her sake, maybe she'll win. Celine Crum, right? Like, she would have, if she did the Pro Series, like, did National Pro Series or whatever, she would have, I mean, pretty easily won. I don't know what her exact thoughts are, but, like, it's, uh, Adriana could pull it up <laughs> for me. It's but, like 580 um, or 5, something yeah. like that. So, like, she, she would have won easily. And, like, with all that, like, she's, like, a 
pretty oh, 560 like, 561 but that's it okay still i made progress yeah she would she would have won like pretty pretty uh handily and like meanwhile she's like a pretty decent underdog to even make it to worlds right there's gonna be no doubling up in any of these weight classes um so it's she would have to beat meg scanlon who had who has like a 20 kilo like spread on her total to like so I think if the if they keep the payouts like that, like some people will just come back, just because like end of the day it's a, a nice bag and like most most of the people who switch will not make it to worlds. So I'm I'm curious how it's gonna go, but I, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so we'll go to you next, JJ. So you you weren't as clear about what you're gonna do after this meet. Have you has this meet changed anything? Have you decided what your what your plan is for either the rest of this year or moving forward? Yeah, my plan right now is still just, um, I started the bulk. I'm going to try to get to 105 by Nats. And if I do what I want to, at, like at that meet, then I'll um, I'll most likely switch over to PLA and try to make it to Junior Worlds. But if I am struggling during this prep and at Nats, then I'll probably just stay USAPL and just still try to build. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna uh, bulk up to 105 because you signed up for 110 for Nats, and then if things go as planned, 100, but I'm but I'm gonna switch. Oh, okay, fine. And when you say if things go as planned, like what would that mean? Like what kind of meat are you talking about that you would come away with being happy? Is there a total? Is there a placing? Like I don't know what. Around around. 915 920 okay so if you do that then you you would take it be happy with it and then you'd move you would move to pla next year and then would you would you go to pla like regular nats or you would like start with junior nats like what would i'll start with junior nats for sure but okay. I mean, junior nats is after yeah. regular nats so you would it would decision be first okay so like the goal right now is hopefully like the bulk goes good, five kilos is a nice amount to add, um, and then you can have the meat you're looking for at at Nats this year, like in USPL Nats this year, and then you would have September to like you would have like a solid eight nine months to get ready for for Junior Nats. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and then Joe, you've already said you're going PLA. Yeah. You're you're signed up. Are you signed up for um for Junior Nats already? Yeah, all right. I got my um, upcoming, I guess, qualifier meet as well. It's like two weeks. I'm just going to do the bar for, I guess, red. And then um, I am doing 83 kg at uh, Junior Nats. So are you even playing, like, for you, how, how are you viewing Junior Nats? Is it just like a chilled meet just to qualify for Worlds? Like, it basically, it's like a second qualifier. Because I don't know who signed up for the weight classes in Junior Nats, but I can't imagine there's any 83s that are even close to 800. Forget about more than that. Like, do you know who signed up? Like who's, like I guess technically. I, I have no who, idea. So. Do, do you know whose lunch money you're stealing? I'm saying. Do you know who who who's decided like a year ago that they're gonna go all in for for PLA and Junior Nats, and then you came and said, "No, I'm taking your spot the world." You don't know who it is. The only other 83 Junior is on the podcast as well right now. It's it's lucky. So unless he's yeah. doing it, then that's pretty much the only person I know that can actually like I guess rival me. I gotta, no, but I don't. Even, I don't even mean rival you because. Because no being no eighty three juniors ever like hit your your total in the IPF. But I'm saying like, is there, I'm trying to feel like is there even like somebody who's like at like seven nine like is there is there a competitor or there really isn't even? I don't I don't I think they're all below seven like thirty. So I have okay, no fine. So okay, yeah, so you go in, you go in, you can hit you can hit your openers and and uh, walk out. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> He's, he's I mean, going to be able to do that at Worlds as well. That too, yeah. But at Worlds, <laughs> I have a whole different game plan. Um, I'm going to try to beat the open world record because I know Russ, yeah. Russ isn't going to go above 842 or at least probably do 843 or something, just slightly chip it. And then when I go to Junior Worlds, I'm going to try to chip that as well and then hopefully get a wild card spot to, to Sheffield. Okay, so so it looks like, looks like we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's start with let's start back for a second. So how confident are you that Russ – uh totals the at least whatever it is 843 or whatever the number is at yeah 843 at p nets how confident are you in that he totals at least that like 100 like unless he like you're 100 100 
unless he just hits his openers, I think he's easily going above 860. Um, but even then, like, let's say he does hit a second attempt squat at like 320 and then hits like 190 bench, like blow ball that. Um, and then like what, a 340 deadlift? I think right there, you're already at 850. So, so you're 100. percent It would take something in, like it would take something insane. You think? Yeah, he would have to like nearly bomb out and only hit openers. So, okay, you're right. It would take him hitting one squat. Yeah, pretty much. I got him around like 870. Um, obviously, he's not gonna like surpass the 842 or 843 mark at Worlds because of Sheffield. So, um, right. Yeah. Well, so I, I was saying first, and I was first just saying nationals just to get. To get the world spot but okay so then you come to worlds and you're saying right so presumably if he he makes the worlds that means delaney doesn't and none of the other 83s are close i mean jurens so, put up like 840 in the gym that's just yeah. we'll see how it transfers <laughs> but yeah i'm i mean listen I'm, he hasn't put up he won't. over 820 out of me i think like i'm yeah. not i don't, I don't see russ losing to jurens only person that can see him like losing to this year would Probably be Angelo, if anything. Would be who? Angelo. Angelo. I think oh, Angelo. Okay. I think, Angelo. I think Russ listen, is you said yourself. You, only person you can't, the team losing to is me. Listen, the only no, nobody's, you. nobody's losing to uh Angelo cannot win with a 165 bench. I'm sorry. 165 bench is in the 80s right now. No. 170. The only chance, oh, uh, like the only chance someone has to beat Russ is this year at Parlifting America. Yeah. Because once he has more time to train at a lower body weight, it's just game over. Like he's gonna be fine. But right. going into going into this PA Nats, he's gonna be light. He might get injured. Even if he gets injured or tweaks something, he'll probably still be strong enough to put up like eight forty. You know what? Um, so let's let's discuss it. Once, once we're discussing that, so who the competitors? There's Angelo and there's I think Chris Perez and I'm not sure if there's anyone else. That's it. Um, Gruden dropped out. Oh, Grun dropped out. Okay, so do you think you think Angelo also has the ability to um, beat Delaney's eight forty two and a half? I do. Um, but I don't think he can beat Russ. But I think Russ is going eight fifty plus. Right, right. Well, I mean, it's weird in in both I see in a bunch of these weight classes. It's weird because you're battling people there. Like, like actually, the best example of it is right. It's the ninety three. right. Like, it's you have Gavin versus Petrie, but like they're really battling an imaginary third person who already lifted in like the, the the early session effectively that's like what it is so it's like yeah you're 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 battling like the person who you're lifting with but you're also battling against a number it makes it kind of strange but so you you think angelo though does have the potential to also hit a 42 and a half plus i mean that'd be a pretty big jump on his best total on his best day it would be yeah but at nats he didn't go all out on the pole i think he had around eight what did he do? Eight nineteen that day. Eight nineteen. Well, Nats. He's like he was injured, and he was like injured him. Well, that too as well. So, like I think all out, he probably had like eight thirty that day, eight twenty five, and then assuming he's not injured now, he made some progress on the bench, hopefully, and I think he has eight forty two and a half on a on a really good day. If he goes like yeah, I'm, three ten, I'm just gonna say no. Sixty seven point five, three sixty two point five, forty. Yeah. I don't think he has it. I'm just gonna put it out. I mean, I don't know if we're gonna end up going doing a PA Nats preview or not, but for now, at least I'm I can see his. Uh, I can see him potentially. Angela usually squats deep, but I could potentially see him getting reds on yeah. squat right. at PA Nats. I mean, if he's getting like, reds, dude, what's that saying? Like, have Ross? you seen his? Have you seen his like every like third attempt? Angelo's hit uh, like his past meet has been two white lights for squats. Yeah, yeah he just mm. does it for the ad. Rate. I don't. Yeah, it, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think he squats high, but I think it's it'll close. Be interesting. He's always close. It's, it's, it's really close. <laughs> yeah, he's really close. It just depends who's judging, honestly. I don't yeah, think. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. He's a big fan of him either. So, what'd you say? I don't think the PA judges would be a big fan of him either. So, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's actually Wait, so what? interesting because, like, people aren't gonna go. Like people like Russ, I mean, like they're not going to go all out at Worlds because they want to save it for Sheffield. But if like he wanted to go all out here, then he could because he you're not breaking would. the world record. Yeah, it just depends. Like, I I don't imagine him going like all all out, like trying to do like 880 or something, just because it's like why would yeah, you? There's no reason. Yeah, think... why would you like risk injury and all that? We'll see Lucky, what Russ what does. You... But, yeah, uh, lucky. What do you say? You think Angelo could also get will also break the eight forty two and a half? 
it'll be interesting what because obviously Angelo is going to pull more than Russ, so they Russ have to just put in something safe to hit on his third. Um, but I could potentially see like Russ misses his third on grip. Angelo has to pull like eight hundred four to beat him, and to beat the eight forty two and a half. Yeah. I mean, like, let's say Russ somehow ends up with, like, 330, I mean, uh, 835, which I doubt is going to happen, but then Angela would still have to pull another 7.5. Like, I don't know. Honestly, uh, Angelo might be, like, I get he wants to go to Worlds, but he might be the kind of person who would be, like, let's say he needs to pull, like, 360 to, to chip Russ and, like, 367 to, like, potentially go to Worlds. He might just, he might take, like, okay, I beat Russ. Like, get a national championship with Russ in it, even without the... uh the world spot it's an interesting yeah. uh because like it kind of like there was the whole thing last year like with sean Jin, he didn't he could have easily be in gruden but he like took a big jump to try to pull for the the world qualifying total yeah. and missed which and it could like if if somebody ended up dropping like he, he would have lost like that that first alternate spot so it's like an interesting thing because people do get hurt like somebody could drop and like that having that first alternate spot is somewhat useful especially if like it means i don't mean like not taking something you have and instead pulling for the win. But, like, if it's, like, ha- you have to load something, like, insane where, like, you probably don't have it, it might be worth, like, pulling for that other spot. But I I, I mean, I, I think I would say I'm, I'm decently – I would say probably, like, 85 to 90% confident Russ takes it. I think I think um, Russ is a clear favorite, but I think it's just going to be more sketchy than people think. Right. Well, I'm, I'm also, like, we'll see what, how his, uh, his depth, all that stuff gets called. We'll see and how the weight cut affects him. But what what do you think, JJ? Yeah, I really don't think Chris or Angelo really have a chance of beating Russ. And I feel like Angelo's top end is probably around 837, 840 maybe. So if he went for the record, I think, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a little he bit... He needs hard. to bench like 170. I think like 170. And, and you're, yeah. are, are you like, also confident oh, that... Are you also confident that Russ... Uh, Pushes past Delaney's number. Oh yeah, for sure. I think he has a sixty pretty easy. Okay, fine. So I, I think the only way what? Russ doesn't go the world is if he bombs out, which is, yeah. I don't know, maybe on <laughs> squats, but I'll, I'll say he's got it. Yeah, I, I mean, I would, I would tend to agree. I'm just like, I, I'm I don't want to get just, blocked. I want to see what his. I want to see how the judges call his squats. That's that's yeah, me too. Just, but okay. And then you know what? While, while we're talking that, just quickly, who do you think for the ninety threes? Keiko, who already have his, has his number, Petrie or Gavin? Let's go, each one of you. Who do you, uh, Joe? Who do you think takes that spot? I think Petrie has the potential, and he should win it because he can gain three kilos. Um, but execution, I haven't seen him execute at this body weight um, in what years now? The last time he was like ninety three was, I think, the Virginia Pro. Uh, where he told what he told like eight ninety nine meet eight eighty eight or something crazy. I guess eight ninety two point five. Like yeah. So just based off that, like if he can just like, return to form and maybe pick up a couple kilos on the squat because he is gaining three kilos of body weight, um, he should be the favorite. I'd say to go to world, but uh, it, it all was eight ninety eight eight ninety five. There we go. Yeah. What did Keiko total eight ninety three? Yeah. Yeah. Eight ninety three. Yeah. If he just so returns he... to form, then he's fine. Like he should. So wait, so your pick. So who's your pick? You gotta pick one of the three. Go. Uh I have to go Petrie then, yeah. Okay. Lucky, pick one of the three. Go. Um, I gotta go with Kraft. Gotta go with Petrie. Okay. JJ, one of the three, go. I said Petrie too. Okay. I'm gonna stick with Keiko. I, I think Petrie definitely has like the upside to go like not only break, beat them, but like I think he'd go into the 900s, but I don't have to see him actually do it. Um, one thing I'm also just actually very interested in do, watching is that Gavin is always usually has like the, the smallest pull and like is in a weird position um, at all his meets. But this is the one time where he doesn't have the last pull, but he knows he needs to beat 893. So everything he does has to. I wonder if like he's somehow able to recover like five weeks after Sheffield and like basically repeat his. Like his squat is obviously insanely strong. I don't know how like how much of a hit it'll take from um, competing again so quickly, but like his bench did not perform at Sheffield. So like if he and got whatever got didn't get 
White. So I wonder if, if he like hits his bench, then like that would put him over the mark already. So I'm curious to see. Yeah, it would be very interesting if they both break it. Um, it's possible. They're, they're both capable of it. But I guess I'll take the person who already had the day and already has that number versus two people who like are capable but both have to have like a close to perfect day to to be like even if Petrie's I would say probably the strongest of the three it's really only by let's say a little bit like maybe he's like five kilos stronger maybe 10 maybe so that still means really having like a nine for nine day which is possible but yeah yeah I just can't go against him Okay. It'll, it, it's been. I mean, he hasn't been posting training uh, at all. Yeah. He he's always so like, like not really posting. Marcelo said it was going well, so I asked okay. him about him. What do you have for your sixty sixes? Oh wait, are we gonna are we gonna do a <laughs> are we gonna do a preview show or what? <laughs> I don't know if we're doing one. My, I mean, you at you asked the ninety threes. Might as well. Yeah, yeah. you know, I I I would te- I would totally just do a full preview show now, but I gotta get off like in a couple of minutes. Okay. I don't know. Maybe are we gonna listen, do one? Maybe maybe if you guys are bored and down to come on for a preview show, we can just keep like keep talking. But I don't know if I know um, enough about lifting to do a full on preview show. Yeah, you for sure do. I think mo- I think I most really people that. Like, I'm on the men's side though. Okay, so for for the men's side, we could do like a a men's side thing. Yeah, I'm down. Hey, why not? If you're down next week, if you're down next week, yeah, we could actually do that. I'll do it. Okay, sounds good. All right, okay, yes, yeah, so I got I gotta head out, <laughs> so we could uh actually do a preview show on Nats next week, and then we could just keep or hopefully talking. like over the we weekend maybe, for, so people forever. have time to listen to it. Because when does Nats um, start? Thursday. Nets. Oh, Nets starts Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. We'll see. Figure it out. Yeah. We'll that should okay. be fun. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, for sure. We. I got. I got to head out like legit now. So. <laughs> thank, you guys so much. thank you guys so much for coming on. We'll just cut this. But um, um, I guess we'll we'll find out if we could figure out a time that we could all do it. Um, like uh the men's. Um, preview. Yeah, just DM us in the, the group chat. Yeah, that sounds okay, fine. Fine. okay, sounds good. All right. All right. See ya.